Okay, my fellow progressive leftists, let's talk about how we destroy the left. Let's destroy the left. Brought to you by Antifa. Okay, so step one, and this is very important, we have to make sure that we demonize the majority population in our country. We can't have them voting for us. We can't have them feeling welcome into our party. We have to make sure that they know that they are guilty regardless of the details of their life. They're guilty, they're privileged, they're racist, and they can join us, but the first thing they have to do is they have to get down on their knees and check their white privilege and then ask permission to join us and get in the back of the line. Now, we don't want to hear about how they're having economic difficulties or factories closing down or any of that horse shit. They just are supposed to get in line, in the back of the line, and let everybody else speak first. So that'll probably make sure that a lot of them don't, you know. No, not many people are going to accept that deal. So, good, we're off to a good start. Okay, we've demonized the majority group in a country. Next. Now, we have to insult the actual country itself. I mean, I don't think there's much else that's going to be able to, you know, push people away as insulting the country from where the people come that we want to vote for us. So our competitors will probably come up with some sort of like a catchy pro-American kind of thing, like, I don't know, make America great again or something. And then we have to come back with something like uh, America was never great. Something just to, just to, you know, to let them know that we don't really like the country, that, uh, you know, that we uh, want them to vote for us in, you know. So, and another thing, classic, is we can take the American flag and we can burn it, spit on it, step on it. That's a really good visual as well. Uh, it's a good way for people to, to see that we really don't like the country. So, that is another very important step. Now, this third step, this becomes uh, even more important with the completion of step number four. But step number three is to demonize the police. Now, we don't want law enforcement in the country. We don't want them to think that, you know, we support them, you know, and we'd also, we don't want to hear about how difficult their job is and how deadly their job is and how they have to daily interact with the dark underbelly of society and psychotics and people living just nightmarish lives and, and crazy violence and having to police these people and how it's slowly pushing them and driving them to stress. and we, we don't want to hear about any of that shit. We just want to focus and hyper-focus on uh, any mistakes that they make and then let them know that we think that uh, they're a bunch of pieces of shit and we would like them to die. That would be the uh, ideal situation. And how we don't want them to police, you know, certain communities. And Okay, so once we do that, now this is key. This is key for step number four. Now I'd like to congratulate everyone on step number four, just recently completed. Now, this one took a long time, it took a long time. Uh, the first part of it was to no platform uh, our political opponents, not letting them speak and blocking their events, not letting them enter uh, venues and spitting at them, insulting them and, and telling them what pieces of shit they are for wanting to hear someone speak. Um, and this took a while, but you know, in our... Society, we've got this really ingrained, like deep ingrained tradition of settling political disputes through dialogue and debate and canvassing and, uh, you know, and in the end, the ballot box. But, uh, you know, we can wear that down. It took a while. We had to keep doing it. And then even when, you know, the election came and we lost fair and square, 
it was important to get out and riot just to make sure everyone knows that we don't actually support the uh, our country's democratic process. Uh, and uh, now it would have been easy for our opponents to kind of rationalize what we were doing by saying it was a small group and that in fact the leaders left-wing leaders uh, didn't support it but the left-wing leader leaders you know were totally silent and that was good kind of like you know showed that they were behind the wearing down of this you know long-standing political tradition of uh, accepting the rule of law and then the result of elections and things like that and then oh, props to Antifa good job guys brilliant so Eventually, we had to bring it up to the next level, you know, where people were, rather than blocking them from getting into, listen to speakers that, you know, oppose us, we had to just get, like, clubs and, and bang them in the head and then mace women in the face and stuff like that and hospitalize people for wanting to hear people, uh, wanting to hear speakers that we disagree with. That was good. Whoa, man, that really upped it to the next level, you know. And then... When the mainstream media got on Twitter or in opinion pieces and talked about how that was okay and, you know, those damn Nazis who wanted to come hear someone speak got what they were, uh, got what was coming to them. Oh, and let's not forget the Richard Spencer thing, man. Oh, f brilliant. Brilliant. That was, was golden, man. So the guy thinks he's, you know living, you know, in a country where he has the right to his own opinion, talking to someone on the street, and BAM! You know, yes! And then we could get all the left-wing outlets behind talking about how it's good to punch people in the face who we disagree with. Just have to label them a certain way. So it's brilliant. Now here's the key thing, man. Ooh, what happened in Berkeley just a few days ago. Now then, that's when the right was like, it's on, you know, and then the battle happened and, and now political violence has been normalized. Political violence has been normalized and at this point, you know, the right has so many more weapons than we do and, uh, you know, quite frankly, you know, uh, most of us are kind of like, you know, college educated, uh, never really got in a fight in our uh, in our life, and we're probably going to get our asses kicked, which is great. And now here's what I talked about, step number three. Step number three was the demonizing of the police. And so that means, do you think the police are going to come in and help us out? Can we talk to the police and be like, hey, hey we're getting our asses kicked over here. This isn't cool. Come and help us, you rat bastard police. Probably not going to happen. Now, the final phase in our plan with the normalization of violence is we have to up the level of violence. So next time we have to come with knives and maybe even guns and maybe we can get the right to up their level of violence too to the point where we're just shooting each other down in the streets. But here's the genius of that and that is the right probably has like 50 guns for every one gun that the left has. So they'll annihilate us! Yes! Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Oh, it's great. It's great. Now let's just get out there and keep blocking people while they're trying to go to work. Uh, blocking roadways and salting the country and attacking unarmed people who just want to hear people speak. Let's get out there and go push to the end and before you know it, we will be irrelevant and have no political sway and people will look at the left in disgust and whew, we love destroy the left. All right, thank you for watching. Get out there and help destroy the left. See you next time.